it's not this weekend in particular, but the weekend after. It will take place on February 18th, which is a Sunday. So, a couple weeks ago, we had the All-Star starters announced for both the East and the West. After that, we got all of the reserves for the East and the West. And most recently, we got the injury replacements for the East, since there have been two injuries. So, that completes our All-Star rosters. I believe it's possible we get one more injury replacement on the East, but we will find out as the NBA All-Star Weekend deadline uh, comes closer. So, uh, without further ado, let us review who is starting for the Eastern Conference in this year's All-Star Game. We will start with the captain. The captain is none other than number 34 for the Milwaukee Bucks. It is Giannis Antetokounmpo. This year, Giannis has been averaging 31.3 points per game, 6.3 assists per game, and 11.3 rebounds per game. I also believe Giannis was number one in the fan voting section of this year's All-Star Game voting, and I think it's the first time in like six years that someone has gotten more votes than LeBron, so a passing of the torch of sorts. Speaking of LeBron, uh, actually no, we'll get back to him, I don't want to talk to him, talk about him yet. So, Giannis is playing one of the forward positions for the East. Then you have Joel Embiid, number 21 of the Philadelphia 76ers. He plays a center forward position, either or. This season, Joel Embiid has been averaging 35.3 points per game, 5.7 assists per game, and 11.3 rebounds per game. Very impressive numbers all across the board. He has had a great season, building on his already very nice uh, MVP season last year. And he might be the front runner uh, for the MVP award if they had not implemented the new rule. There's a new rule that has been state that has been enforced where you have to play. I believe it's at least 65 games in the season in order to qualify for major awards like MVP or Six Man of the Year. And Joel Embiid, he is not going to make that threshold, so even though he's having a very nice year, he will not repeat as MVP. And uh, a big part of that is due to injury. Sometimes he load manages, like when he plays the Nuggets, but as of right now, he is injured uh, due to a little bit of a tussle with Jonathan Kuminga in a Warriors game last week. Kuminga and Embiid were going for a loose ball, and I believe Kuminga dove on Embiid's leg, and that caused Embiid to suffer a meniscus sprain, I believe. And so, Joel Embiid is now injured and will not actually participate in this year's NBA All-Star Weekend. After that, you have number zero of the Indiana Pacers, Tyrese Halliburton. This is the first time in Halliburton's career that he will be an NBA All-Star starter. This year, he has been averaging 22.5 points per game, 11.7 assists per game, and 3.9 rebounds per game. His assist numbers are off the charts. Uh, we might be looking at a new point guard Chris Paul, he's kind of ending his career soon, he's coming to the end, and uh, we may have found the next, the next guy. Very impressive season for him. The Pacers were mighty hot at the beginning of the year. Uh, they made it to the finals of the NBA in-season tournament, but they could not get past the Lakers, and I think they've dropped in the rankings a little bit because Halliburton was injured but they had a blockbuster trade where they acquired Pascal Siakam, and so we'll see how they fare in this year's Eastern Conference playoffs. After that, you finish out the East. Wait, no, I am. I'm trolling. I'm lying. Uh, you have the next guard for the Eastern Conference, and it is another number zero, but this time it's 
number zero for the Milwaukee Bucks. This would be Damian Lillard, their new offseason acquisition. This season, Dame has been averaging 24.9 points per game, 6.8 assists per game, and 4.2 rebounds per game. Um, you know, personally, I do not think Damian Lillard deserved an all-star starting spot. That is just my two cents. I think that he could have gone to some more deserving Eastern guards, but I will hold that for now and address it later. But, you know, props to Dame for achieving that in his first year with the Bucks. And finally, you have yet another number zero in the all-star Eastern starters, and this is number zero for the Boston Celtics. It is Jason Tatum. This year, Tatum has been averaging 27.0 points per game, 4.5 assists per game, and 8.4 rebounds per game. Uh, and, you know, he's been the leader, the face of the Celtics, as they have been number one for the entire season in the East. So, a well deserved spot from him. Now, transitioning to the Western Conference. For the Western Conference starters, they have been led by their captain, and this is a rather obvious one. Uh, I mentioned him before, but now I can actually talk about him. It is LeBron James, number 23 for the Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, yeah, he's usually number one in fan voting, yes. A huge fan base this year he finishes as second but still the most in the Western Conference this year LeBron has been averaging 24.9 points per game 7.6 assists per game and 7.3 rebounds per game but yeah an impressive season from LeBron thus far uh, doing all that he has at age 39 uh, the trade deadline is you know, coming soon, and LeBron tweeted out the hourglass emoji, so we're in the final stretch. We'll see who gets traded before the deadline, and we'll see if the Lakers make any moves. Who knows, but it's always an interesting one. Um, a couple years ago, or many years ago, on the Cavs, they completely overhauled their roster at the trade deadline, so we'll see if LeBron and Chris Paul, sorry, <laughs> not Chris Paul, Rich Paul have been cooking up any dealings, willings, and dealings uh, to acquire new players, but nothing has been announced as of yet, and there's only one day left. But I digress. After that, we move into the next All-Star starter for the Western Conference. Uh, this is number 77 on the Dallas Mavericks. It is Luka Doncic. Doncic. Why can I not say his name when I'm whispering? Luka Doncic. 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 Oh my goodness. I think I'm... I'm suffering some sort of stroke, it seems. I don't know. Maybe I don't say his name and I've forgotten how to say it. Luka. It's Luka. Everyone knows who this is. Um, I'm appalled at my own inability to say his last name right now. I'm going to have to work on this after I finish filming. But, uh, you know, yet another amazing season from Luca. Every year, it seems like he puts up more and more impressive stat lines. This year, he has been averaging 34.5 points per game, 9.4 assists per game, and 8.8 .8 rebounds per game. The Mavericks were doing pretty well earlier in the season. Uh, and then I think they dropped a bit, but they're still in the running for the West. Uh, they finally get Kyrie back, so Luka gets some help, but they're not at that upper echelon of the West anymore, so hopefully they're able to climb back up. After that, you have number 35 of the Phoenix Suns. This is Kevin Durant, uh, otherwise known as K. KD this season has been playing very well, averaging 28.3 points per game, 
6 assists per game and 6.4 rebounds per game. Um, the Suns, they're actually not doing the best this year, even though they added Bradley Beal to Bradley Beal to round out their big three. Uh, they just haven't been as dominant or impressive as people were expecting. But there's still time to figure it out. There's still a lot of games left to be played. And they still sit at a positive record. So I'm sure they're not too upset with their performance. After that, you have number two for the Oklahoma City Thunder. This is a guard. His name is Shea Gilgis Alexander. Um, you know, Shea is the real deal. I believe this is the first time he is an all, all-star starter, um, and it is very well deserved. Uh, the Thunder, for a while, they were number two in the West. They were number one at one point. Now there's like a four-way tie between Denver, uh, the Clippers, the Thunder, and the T-Wolves. So I don't know who is currently truly the number one, but they're all very close to each other. Um, and Shea is having an unbelievable season after an already very impressive season last year. He is averaging 31.1 points per game, 6.6 assists per game, and 5.6 rebounds per game. Uh, he also averages one very sassy post-game Instagram <laughs> caption per game. Uh, I don't know if you keep up with his Instagram, but it's always very clever lyrics. Uh, he's like a one-liner rapper. Drake, a while ago, had this book where he just released one-line poems. I think Shea Gilgis Alexander clears him very easily in terms of the creativity in his one-liners. Uh, could be a profession for him in the future if you wanted. And lastly, the final, fifth and final starter for the Western Conference All-Star Starters is number 15 of the Denver Nuggets. That would be the center, Nikola Jokic. This year, he has been averaging 26.3 points per game, 9.0 assists per game, and 12.2 rebounds per game. And he has led the Nuggets to basically close to the one seed again as they are the defending champs. So now that we know all of these starters in both the East and the West, let's go over the Eastern Conference Reserves. These are the people who are... Actually, uh, there's two, two categories for the East. You have the ones that were initially nominated as the Reserves, and then you have two injury replacements who will be filling in for the two Eastern Conference All-Stars that are unable to participate due to their injuries. So first up, you have number 13 of the Miami Heat. This is Bam Adebayo. Uh, this season, Bam is averaging 20.2 points per game, 4.1 assists per game, and 10.6 rebounds per game. After him, you have a first-time All-Star in Paolo Banchero. Uh, of the Miami, what am I saying, of the Orlando Magic, sorry, I get my Florida teams confused, especially when they're back-to-back, -back. um, yes, number five for the Orlando Magic, he has been having a terrific year, uh, the Magic were very high up in the East at one point, but they have kind of sunk down to that play-in caliber type of team, so yeah, their run has maybe fizzled a bit, but Still, they look very impressive. I did not expect them to be as good as they are. And uh, Paolo has put together some very nice games this year. So, props to him. He has been averaging 23 points per game, 5.1 assists per game, and 6.9 rebounds per game. After him, you have another first-time All-Star uh, appearance in Scotty Barnes number four of the Toronto Raptors. He is serving as an injury replacement. Um, Scotty Barnes this season for the Raptors 
has been averaging 20.2 points per game, 5.8 assists per game, and 8.1 rebounds per game. He's had some nice uh, positive development. He won the Rookie of the Year award in his rookie year, and then I feel like he regressed a little bit. He wasn't making the positive leaps I, that people were hoping for, but he has started to find his groove and really flourished on Toronto this year. So, uh, hats off to him as well. After that, you have number seven of the Boston Celtics. This is the guard, Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown uh, rounds out the dynamic duo that leads the Celtics. It's him and Jason Tatum, or the Jays as they call them. This year, Jalen Brown has been averaging 22.3 points per game, 3.7 assists per game, and 5.4 rebounds per game. After that, you have number 11 of the New York Knicks, Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson has been having a fantastic season, averaging 27.2 points per game, 6.5 assists per game, and 3.9 rebounds per game. The Knicks, ever since trading for OG and Anupe, have been one of the best teams in the league. Uh, I believe they won nine straight games very recently. They were, they set a franchise record for the most number of wins in the month of January. They have been on a tremendous tear, and they are looking quite good. Um, and I am happy for them, you know. The Knicks, they're one of those teams that are kind of in perpetual midness. They get talked about a lot. One year they made it kind of far under Julius Randle, but they needed someone who could do more than Randall, and Jalen Brunson has been thriving as the face of this franchise, so very happy for Brunson that he gets this opportunity that he got an All-Star nomination. Personally, I think in every way, shape, or form, he deserved this over Damian Lillard. Not to say that Damian Lillard is unskilled, but Dame has had better seasons, and he did not get it, and I don't think that Dame is doing something that is that wow for wow worth wow worthy um whereas Brunson is making the Knicks relevant which is spectacular uh so I I think that he should have gotten that starting spot over Dame but that is just my opinion after that you have number zero for the Philadelphia 76ers and that is the guard Tyrese Maxey another first-time all-star appearance. Uh, he has been having a great season. Tyrese is averaging 25.9 points per game, 6.4 assists per game, and 3.5 rebounds per game. Very good um, shooting, playmaking this year on the 76ers, and he has, you know, filled that role since Harden left pretty well. Obviously, with James Harden leaving, you wondered if the 76ers were going to be as good. Um, and so far, they've looked quite great. Joel Embiid is playing just as well. Tyrese Maxey has taken a great leap. Uh, and yeah, I think he truly deserves this all-star spot. So, great job. After that, you have number 45 for the Cleveland Cavaliers. And that would be another guard in Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell is also having a very impressive season, so far averaging 28.2 points per game, 6.4 assists per game, and 5.4 rebounds per game. Uh, the Cavs, they lost Evan Mobley and Darius Garland for quite a while, like an extended period of time, and yet they have done very well in the absence of those two uh, very key contributors and a lot of their success is has to be credited to Donovan Mitchell uh, this guy is he's a winner you know he was always winning on Utah he's still always winning with the Cavs he just brings winning culture wherever he goes uh, both 
postseason success has been hard to come by for him, but in the regular season, uh, he's a baller. He averages 20 points a game, a minimum, in every year that he's played. And, uh, yeah, that is the same this year. I honestly think that if they had given Donovan Mitchell the All-Star starting spot, I also wouldn't have minded it. Uh, minded it. Mounded. Minded. That sounds correct. Um, yeah, over Dame. I don't think Dame deserved it. Donovan, Jalen Brunson, either one of these guys, I would have respected it, but come on. Then after Dame, uh, sorry, after Donovan, you have number 30 for the New York Knicks, and that is Julius Randle. Randle uh, also plays a key role on this team. He used to be the face, but now he is more the number two option, and he's doing pretty well. He plays alongside Jalen Brunson quite effectively, and this season he has been averaging 24.0 points per game, 5.0 assists per game, and 9.2 rebounds per game. Now, unfortunately, we will not see Julius Randle play in the All-Star game because of an injury, so he will not be available. So, as an injury replacement for him, we have number 11 of the Atlanta Hawks filling in uh, with Trey Young. Trey Young is, this year has been averaging 27.3 points per game, 10.9 assists per game, and 2.8 rebounds per game. Uh, Trey Young was one of the most talked about all-star snubs from this year's lineup. Um, he did not make it originally, and a lot of people were questioning why, because he definitely has the stats and the contribution for it, uh, with 27.3 points per game and 10.9 assists per game. Those are some of the highest in the league. Some people cited his team's success, but that doesn't really make sense when you think about some of the other All-Stars that were included this year, and so, yeah, it looked like he was a snub, but fortunately enough, he gets the opportunity, even though it is due to another person's um, injury, he is able to make it this year, so I think he's deserving. I think he probably should have made it in the original lineup. Um, who would I dig out is an interesting question. It's not one that I really want to think about. Uh, but I'm glad that he was able to make it nonetheless. After that, we will move into the Western Conference Reserves. So these are the guys that will be playing off the bench for the West. Uh, first up, you have number one for the Phoenix Suns, the shooting guard known as Devin Booker. You may have heard of him. A uh, very talented guy. Honestly, the face of the, that franchise, even though you have Kevin Durant and he is the starter, um, D-Book is the guy that brought the Suns out of poverty alongside Monty Williams and Chris Paul originally and he stayed loyal to that team, so to me, Devin Booker is the Suns. This year, he has been averaging 27.9 points per game, 7.1 assists per game, and 4.7 rebounds per game. You know, when you watch him, his game is very smooth. Uh, I can't deny it. I'm not even, I don't even like Devin Booker, to be honest. Every time the Warriors play against the Suns, I I really wish those shots weren't as successful as they are, but it's like any mid-range shot that he pulls up, it seems to go in. I don't know. A uh, very talented dude, and yeah, he makes yet another All-Star game appearance. Speaking of the Warriors, after that, you have number 30 for the Golden State Warriors, Stephen Curry. Uh, this year, he has been averaging 28.1 points per game. 5.0 assists per game and 4.4 rebounds per game. Um, you know, with Curry making it, obviously Curry was going to make it, I think, but he did not make an all-star starting spot. Some Warriors fans were protesting this, talking about how Curry, it is uh, a travesty that he did not make the all-star starting lineup, that he was snubbed. I think I'm just on the wrong part of the internet because there's no way that is true. Um, Warriors.
Raiders fans, they unfortunately suffer from a lot of delusion, and, you know, I'm no exception. I still think that we'll make the playoffs and make a run in this year. Uh, knowing that we're fully well the 11th seed in the West, but, yeah, you have to give it up to Luka and Shea Gilgis, Alexander. Those guys are balling out. Their teams are doing much better. As great as Steph is, the competition is just too great this year. Um, but yeah, I'm glad that Steph's in the All-Star game. It would be crazy if he did not make it. Um, so yeah, um, another thing that people were referencing in the Trey Young defense was how come Trey Young is being punished because his team is bad but Curry isn't. And yeah, that's a valid point. The Warriors are pretty dookie donkey this year. I don't think that should that should play as much of a factor. So I'm glad that Trey Young made it, and I'm glad that Curry made it, and hopefully both of their teams can do better as the games progress. After that, you have number three of the Los Angeles Lakers, Anthony Davis. This year, Davis has been averaging 24.7 points per game, 39, sorry, 3.9 assists per game, and 12.3 rebounds per game. And, uh, honestly, I think that Anthony Davis has been the best Laker by far this year. Uh, he has been the pillar of their defense. He has been there on offensively more, uh, consistently for the Lakers than LeBron. I feel like LeBron has actually sat out quite a few games, whereas Anthony Davis, in a surprising turn of events, has been available in, like, every game this year. So, hugely dependable. Uh, getting you 25 on offense is the only reason their defense exists. Uh, I honestly think that AD should have been in the starting lineup over LeBron, but with the way that the NBA voting works and all that, obviously LeBron was not going to miss the All-Star starters, so it is what it is, but truly in terms of who deserved it, I think that Davis deserved it off the Lakers more than LeBron. After that, you have number five of the Minnesota Timberwolves, Anthony Edwards. Uh, this is another very well-deserved spot, and and the Timberwolves crew have led the team to the number one uh, seed in the West, which is quite remarkable. I, in my life, the Timberwolves had never been number one for such a long stretch of time, and you know, they look pretty good. Now, whether they keep it or not, that's up for debate. The Clippers are very hot. They're a rising team. They finally got everything clicking, but the Timberwolves, they haven't really had that meltdown yet. Uh, a lot of people thought maybe it was just an early season luck or something that would fizzle, but so far that hasn't really been the case. They have managed to make it past the halfway mark and retain their position at the very top of the West. So, very good season from Ant and those D-Wolves. After that, you have number 13 of the Los Angeles Clippers, uh, who is Paul George. Oh wait, I did not talk about Ant's stats at all, did I? Anthony Edwards this season has been averaging 25.9 points per game, 5.1 assists per game, and 5.3 rebounds per game. After that, you have Paul George of the Los Angeles Clippers, who wears number 13. Uh, this year, he has been averaging 22.6 points per game, 3.6 assists per game, and 5.4 rebounds per game. Now, Paul George's stats this year, they're not quite as impressive as a couple years prior, um, and he has been injured a bit, but this is the most effective and healthy Clippers team we have seen since the band got together. Uh, the Paul George and Kawhi Leonard duo in their last few seasons, they they haven't been able to make quite the run that everyone was expecting them to. Everyone always has them at the top of their playoff brackets and making the conference finals, and they haven't been able to do it. But this year, it just might be the case. They started off the season with a 
Westbrook, who they acquired last year. Then they made a trade for James Harden, and at first it looked bad. They did not look good at all. They were losing a lot, but they finally figured it out, and since then, they've been the best team in the league. Uh, actually, okay, well, the Knicks have also been really good since OG, so two very successful trades for two different franchises. Um, but I believe there is like a stretch of 25 games where the Clippers were the best. They went like 20 and 5 or something like that. Um, so yeah, safe to say that this James Harden trade is working out for the best. Um, if everyone is able to stay healthy, hopefully they can make a deep run like they've been trying to all these years. But it really just depends on the health of these guys. But yeah, moving into another Los Angeles Clipper, you have number two, uh, Kawhi Leonard. This year he has been averaging 24.4 points per game, 3.7 assists per game, and 6.3 rebounds per game. Very good season. Uh, I think the thing that's been most remarkable has been his availability. He has been sitting far fewer games than prior seasons, uh, and he looks good. Looks very good on both offense and defense. You know, the Clippers are at a very high seed, uh, about to take the number one, possibly. Uh, so, yeah, great, great year from both of these guys. And the final all-star starter, sorry, not starter, all-star reserve for the Western Conference is number 32 of the Minnesota Timberwolves, which would be the center, Carl Anthony Towns. Carl Anthony Towns this year has been averaging 22.7 points per game, 3.0 assists per game, and 8.6 rebounds per game. Uh, he also had a very impressive scoring night where he put up 62 points, I believe, in a loss. Uh, funnily enough, a lot of guys this year have gone on to score a crazy amount of points. You have Luka scoring 73, you have Embiid scoring 70, Cat uh, scoring 62, Curry scoring 60. Uh, it's just been kind of ridiculous. Oh, I think Devin Booker also scored 60 something. Yeah, just crazy scoring this year. No defense, no defense in this league at all anymore. But it's fun to watch. So, yeah, Carl Anthony Towns, as I said, the Minnesota Timberwolves, they've been number one for a good chunk of this year. And that's pretty impressive. So, the D Wolves were rewarded with both Ant and Cat making the All Star game. So, now that we know the All Star rosters heading into All Star weekend, which is two weekends from now, let's just take a quick look at the NBA standings to know how these teams are doing. Uh, starting off with the Eastern Conference, you have the Boston Celtics at the number one seed, uh, sitting at a record of 38 and 12. Then you have the Cleveland Cavaliers at the two seed at a record of 32 and 16. They are currently five games back from the Celtics. Then at number three, you have the Milwaukee Bucks at a record of 33 and 18. They are five and a half games back of the Celtics. Then at number four, you have the New York Knicks who are also at 33 and 18. And they also sit five and a half games back of the Celtics. So they are technically tied with the Bucks. Then you have the Philadelphia 76ers at 30 and 19. They are currently 7.5 games back of the Celtics. At number 6, you have the Indiana Pacers um, at 29 and 23. They are currently 10 games back of the Celtics. At number 7, you have the 27 and 24 Miami Heat, who are 11.5 games back of the Celtics. They have had a bit of trouble this year. Uh, they had a big losing streak, one of their worst in history, <laughs> which was like seven or eight straight games. And then I think in the midst of that, they traded for Terry Rozier, uh, and Rozier is starting to pick it up. So 
maybe brighter days ahead for them. Um, but yeah, they have slipped. Then at number eight, you have the Orlando Magic at a record of 27 and 24. They are also 11.5 games back from Boston. At number nine, you have the Chicago Bulls, who are at a record of 24 and 27. 14.5 games back of the Celtics. Then at 10, you have the Atlanta Hawks, a 22 and 28 record, 16 games back. Uh, at the 11, you have the Brooklyn Nets, who have a record of 20 and 30, and they are 18 games back. Then at number 12, you have the Toronto Raptors, who are at a record of 17 and 33 and they are 21 games back. Then at number 13, you have the Charlotte Hornets, who have set a record of 10 and 39, and they are currently 27.5 games back of the Celtics. Then at number 14, you have the Wizards, who are at a record of 9 and 40, so they are still looking for their double-digit wins. Uh, they are currently 28.5 games back of the Celtics. And lastly, in the East, you have the number 15 Detroit Pistons, who are currently 6 and 43, and they are 31.5 games back from the Celtics. Uh, the Pistons, they, they set the record for the most consecutive losses in a season. That was pretty nice. And then they lost, or sorry, they won against the Toronto Raptors on the day that the Raptors traded OG and Anube to the Knicks. So the Raptors were short-handed. They tried their best to not lose. I watched the like, last five minutes of that game. It was very entertaining, but the Pistons were finally able to snap their losing streak. So now, moving into the Western Conference, you have the current one seed at a record of 34-15 in the Los Angeles Clippers. So they are the one seed. Then you have the Oklahoma City Thunder at a record of 35 and 16 at the two, but they're zero games back of the Clippers. They're technically dead even. Then at the three seed, you have also the Minnesota Timberwolves at 35 and 16. So they have the exact same record as the Thunder. So they are zero games back, and at the four seed, you also have another 35 and 16 team in the Denver Nuggets. So uh, seeds two through four are all the exact same in terms of games back and overall record. This top four race in the Western Conference is extremely tight, uh, and currently the Clippers lead it, but. We'll see how long that lasts for. After that, you finally get a little bit of space. Uh, the number five seed in the West is the Sacramento Kings at a record of 29 and 20. Now, the Kings are an interesting team. Even though they sit in the middle of the pack of the Western Conference, they got no respect in terms of the All-Star game. You have two very promising and productive players on the Kings in DeMontis Sabonis and De'Aaron Fox, and I surely thought at least one of them was going to make the All-Star game, but uh, we didn't see either, and I can't say, I, I, I must say I am a bit surprised uh, if I were to remove someone and add someone in. It's a bit tricky. Uh, I would Personally, it's between Paul George and Cat. I would probably, I'd probably take out Cat and put in Sabonis. I feel like that makes more sense to me. Even though Cat had that very nice game and the T Wolves are number one, it is a two-headed dragon uh, for the Timberwolves. You know, they also have Gobert who plays the center, so I don't think that Cat's as impressive as Ant. I don't think they needed both, but it is what it is. Then at number six in the West, you have the Phoenix Suns, who set at a record of 30 and 21, and they are also five games back of the Clippers, or of the one seed. Then at number 
seven, you have the New Orleans Pelicans, who are 29 and 21. They are five and a half games back, and their scoring is actually very interesting. When you look at their games, it's really a group effort. Zion is not as dominant as he has been in previous seasons. He is not averaging like a crazy 27 points per game. It's like a decent amount from Brandon Ingram, a decent amount from CJ McCollum, a, ze- a decent amount from Zion. You got Jose Alvarado, Trey Murphy, um, Herb Jones. Uh, who is that new guy? They have a guy who's kind of young who is doing really well. Maybe it's like Jordan Willis. I don't remember his name, but that guy is legit great 3 and D player. Um, making a huge impact in just his rookie year. So yeah, uh, very much like a group effort from the Pelicans. Every time I check their stats, it's like they don't have a single 20 point scorer, but they have like 9 guys in double digits. So, a cool team. Then at number 8 in the West, you've got the Dallas Mavericks sitting at a record of 28 and 23. They sit seven games back of the one seed. Uh, at number nine in the West, you have the Los Angeles Lakers with a record of 27 and 25. They are eight and a half games back from the one seed. At number 10, you have the Utah Jazz who are at a dead even record of 26 and 26. They are nine and a half games back of the one seed. Then at number 11, you've got the Golden State Warriors, who are at a record of 22 and 25. They've played a few less games this season because they unfortunately had one of their uh, assistant coaches pass away right before a game, so they postponed to potentially three games, and so they played slightly less than the rest of the teams. Um, I believe those matchups were supposed to be against the Jazz and the Mavericks, so I think those teams are also missing a game. Um, but yeah, they are currently 11 games back from the one seed. And then number 12, you have the Houston Rockets, who are at 23 and 27. They are 11 and a half games back from the one seed. At 13, you have the Memphis Grizzlies, who are 18 and 33. Uh, They're 17 games back from the one seed. At the 14, you have the Portland Trailblazers, who sit at a record of 15 and 35, and they are 19.5 games back from the one seed. And finally, you have the number 15, San Antonio Spurs, who are 10 and 40 this year, and they are 24.5 games back of the one seed. Um, something interesting to note is how how different the competition is in the West and in the East. Obviously, you have the Celtics, who are so far ahead of everyone else in the East. They are five games ahead of their nearest competition. Whereas the first four teams in the West are all the same, and then you have the Kings who are five games back. It's a very tight top four race in the West. And then in the East, the bottom few teams are really like, they're quite bad. Um, Basically, the top eight teams in the East are all above 500, and then the rest are below it. And in the West, you have the top 10 teams at 500 and above, and the rest are below it. But, uh, there's like, there's just more really trash teams. Um, because you see the Raptors, there's the number 12 seed in the East, but they're at 0.34, meaning they've won 34% of their games this year. And if you take a look at the number 12 seed in the West, which is the Rockets, they're uh, 0.46. So, kind of shows you that, like, 
the standout in the Celtics, uh, they they truly are very good. But the rest of the East, it's more sp sparse, uh, top heavy. Whereas the competition in the West is more dense and compact together. Anyone could make a run. I feel like, yeah, the Rockets onwards. Anyone from the 12 seed and above truly could end up in the playoffs. Whereas when you take a look at the East, realistically, I want to say maybe the 10 seed. <laughs> I mean, the 10 seed by default gets a shot at the play in, but. You have some really bad teams here. Um, the Raptors are not looking good at all. The Nets could potentially crawl in and edge out maybe the Hawks. But really, you have the Magic. Everyone above the Magic seems pretty solid. And between the Nets, the Hawks, and the Bulls, one of them is going to drop out of the race. Uh, whereas in the West, it's hard to say for sure. Like see teams rise and fall all the time. Um, the Lakers a couple weeks ago were all the way at the 12th seed. Now they have obviously climbed to the 9th. The Warriors have fallen. The Jazz at one point rose to 8. Now they're at 10. Um, it's very hard to say who's going to end up in it and not in it. Uh, but the trade deadline will be pretty key for that. And the trade deadline is tomorrow, February 8th, which is a Thursday. So, We'll see uh, who ends up on which teams, which teams go for a big splash in the last day of the